Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. In uh, today's episode, it is 9.30 p.m. You know what that means. Uh, I have one hour until I meant to stream, which means that if I don't have a good run today, it's going to make me late for stream, and I'm going to be very... I mean, not I'm happy I'm doing it to myself, but... I'm just like, I'm sitting here at my computer, and I'm like, well, I got an hour before I'm going to go do stream. I should do something productive, because I've been playing Final Fantasy for the last few hours. And, uh, here we are. Time to play, time to play Monster Train. I'm gonna cut the intro a little shorter. I've been saying that and then going long anyway, but no, this time I'm really just gonna go start the run. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of work talking about today, just knocked out another meeting uh, a little while ago. Last project is due in on Wednesday. We're doing it. I'm making it. Living my life a quarter mile at a time, as a wise man once said. Just watched uh, The Fast and the Furious 1, by the way. Really, just like an exceptionally bad movie. Cannot believe that they managed to make more than one of that movie. I guess it is so bad it's good, though, really. Like, it is really bad. But it was, it was very enjoyable because of how terrible it was. Lots of things didn't make sense. Uh, I... I think that, and this is going to lead into my question for today, I think that my favorite moment in the movie was when they were trying to find uh, Dominic Toretto. They couldn't figure out where he went. And so the guy who was trying to find him, he, call, he he's a police officer, I believe. And he calls the police station and goes, hey, I need to find this guy. Here's his phone number. Tell me where he is. And... Like, that, that's just not how that works. You can, like, catch phone calls. Like, obviously, you can triangulate phone calls on cell towers, but you can't just give someone a phone number and go, okay, found them. So, that leads into my question for today, which is, uh, what's your favorite example of, hey, that's not how this works in movies that you can think of? Because, like, there's got to be a lot of them. There's got to be a lot of them, especially if you're in, like, a science field. I imagine you watch any movie with any sort of science going on and you go, hey, that's not right. Or like math too, you maybe look at some math equations and go, nope, that's not correct. Or even chess. I think that uh, a cla another classic is that the Harry Potter, uh, uh, one of the Harry Potters has a chess scene in it that's just like bad. The play is terrible that they make from what I hear, or it's like not optimal. I don't know, lots of, I'm sure there's a lot of them out there. It, it doesn't have to be a movie, by the way. It can be in anything. Video games, TV. But just what's an example? I saw that thing in The Fast and the Furious, so here we are. I said I would cut the intro shorter, and I made it three minutes anyway. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. It's Hellhorned Exile Umbra today. Close of Sigil, Daedalus, Rage Fell, Chase Seraph, Horn Break, Space Prism, Rage Serum. Chase Seraph with a rage idea? Hmm. It's more likely than you think. Drop Cage is like, it's the greatest variance pickup of all time, so I'm gonna take Scorch Steel because it's just fine. I don't want to take the high variance, and we're playing Brawler today. Surprise, see Brawler, pick Brawler. I did think about taking that 100 gold there because I have uh, Bra Brawler Prince and I have Rage Serum. Uh, I'm glad I didn't because this combat would be a little scary if I had Brawler, I or if I had the... Actually, maybe it wouldn't be because I have the Morsels. I probably could have gotten away with it, actually. Because I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to feed a bunch of more souls to Prince. Uh, this train steward should go mid floor to catch a collector. I guarantee the collector, too. It's fine. Like, ultimately, the way that I played this out is going to be okay. I rolled a clergyman combat in a deck that started with Blink and... Oh, he has 15 armor. Yeah, because of Scorch Steel. A, a deck that has Blink and Torch, I roll Clergyman Combat. So, ultimately, I will be having an interview in the post game of explaining why I'm so good at the game. Rage Stream is better to put down here because it's going to run out of rage by the time he goes up. I get the same. I get a little, a little less value, but I actually get the value, so, you know. I could have probably gotten away with the money. I mean, definitely with the Clergyman Combat, but there's combats where it would be. Very pricey, I would say. So, I think a little, a little bit on the safe side is fine with me. I'm gonna play Ritual of Battle into Chase Seraph. Yep, sure am. Uh, Perils? Yeah, Perils makes sense here because it's a Rage 3 as well. 
So if I end up on the Perils line, it's still good. And for the time being, we're gonna pick Morsel Maker as our Prince frontline. Ideally, we find something better, but he's playable. Endless plus 25 damage shield 3. Morsel Master. I. I kinda wanna try Morsel Maker infused with Morsel Master, and then I look hard for. Uh, morsel infuse or morsel upgrades like damage shield. It could be fun, or it could be terrible, and I really have no idea. I'll click it, and like we're not committed by any means, but I'll click it, and I'm gonna go damage shield three plus twenty five morsel maker here as well. I don't know. I, I clicked some stuff yesterday, and I said maybe this will be cool, and then we had just one of the more ridiculous runs I've played. So maybe we can have that happen here, you never know. Spikes 3 is okay. Mm. Nah. Not worth it, I don't think, actually. I talked myself into and then out of it in a very short period of time there. Good hit. But yeah, with Scorch Steel, I'm thinking we could pick up like a damage shield and one morsels, and then all of a sudden, uh, these morsels are ex or like I don't know, maybe maybe plus five health would be cool too. I'm thinking there are pickups here that would make me go okay. And now these morsels are just immortal, right? And that's that's what I'm aiming for. In the early game, they're gonna do great. On the divinity, they will start to fall off, but in the early game, they're gonna do just exceptionally. This is very strong, and I can make removals up until, uh, I can make removals for a while. Yeah, because, like, we're, we're good. I can just make this a deck that's very thin and plays Rage a lot from this position. But I have to, uh, I have to solve long-term, because Prince dies long-term. That's the problem here. That's your big problem. Prince is gonna die in the long term of this run. So I need to pick a card that'll help me with that. And Fortify is not the worst one. If I had taken Drop Cage, we could have played Hidden Passage, but uh, I did not, so I don't believe I will. Second Ritual is not bad. I think I need to take Fortify, though. I'm gonna take Fortify. Not exciting, but it's not bad. Doesn't get enough health for a mortal trade to work, and I have like a million things, so I don't need mine collapse. So an obvious idea here is go right, find Steelworker, play Steelworker, infuse Steelworker. That's an obvious answer to keep Prince alive on Divinity. That'll that'll work. Because that's plus ten per round. You have to give him a little bit of uh, armor. Like, we need to find a few more answers, but that's just, that's a start. Alternatively, we go left and we just hard commit. Because if we miss over here, it's pretty terrible. Unless there's a value stone in the temple. This is a hard choice that you could lay rover for a long time. Uh, what am I going to do? Excellent question. I think I'm going to go left. I think I'm going to go left. Right path, it just doesn't seem right. Because... If I miss everything, I'm exceptionally weak, whereas I'm getting at least a, I'm getting an average benefit over here versus having the high roll or low roll on the right. I'm gonna go left. No value stone, which means that it does feel like this is correct. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna put a lot of faith in Plink on this run, actually. This is gonna be the Plink run. Yeah, no value stone means that the duplicate is basically worthless to me. Resonant Shard's pretty good. Oh, wait, but we put more value into Plink with Temper Talisman. I actually don't hate this idea. Resonant Shard is okay, but ideally we're going to have so much Rage Prince, Prince is going to pop off anyway. Let me go for the Plink upgrade. Purge a unit, gain an upgraded version later. I don't know if this actually ever gives you anything good. Give me a spell. Give me, like, spreading Fortify here. I'm down for anything on Fortify, so yeah, pick Fortify for two rings. Spreading Fortify. Imagine that. Double stack spreading Fortify gameplay. Or like spell chain spreading Fortify. Ooh, that would get that gets weird. 
No, I think our early game is very strong and we just have to look for the answer into the mid game here. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I have faith that Monster Cream will not leave me hanging out here. Could have played Morsel Master this time around instead of killing that guy. I just meant to kill him. I felt the blood loss, you know? Sometimes I, I got the need. Why'd I make these? <laughs> why'd, I, why'd I make these morsels? I tried to, too. It was like, I, I planned that. I looked for those. This bomb doesn't kill my morsel. What a world. I should play Perils, though. I miss, like, six damage on Daedalus for not playing Perils. You know, we should be mid, let's see. Are these morsels are just unkillable, or what? They just absolutely do not die. Now, I don't have the damage. Oh, but I have the bonus damage, actually. That's right, these do, these do more. Ember Talisman might be bad if I pick up any of the self-damage bonus attacks. Like, Branding Right, for example, gets a little worse with it, but... You know, we'll see. You know what I'm gonna say. We'll see. There's a whole lot of speculating I can do in this position, but at the end of the day, we just have to sit here and go, I wonder what Monster Train will show me today. I wonder what it's gonna be. This runs a little out of my control. I just have to solve survivability for Prince, though, and we are A-OK. -okay. It could even be holdover perils and then uh, void binding idea. Kinda why I held on to the perils, so we could do holdover void binding peril gameplay. Or why I took the barrels in the first place, I guess. That was the initial thought. Yeah, look at this floor. He doesn't even... doesn't even hit? Wait, really? He doesn't even get... I guess this is... this is a lot of damage, sure. Huh. How about it? Alright. Forever Consumed is okay. And that's about all I can say for it. It's not great, but it's fine. It... Eh, you know, I'll take it. I think it's fine. Apex in. I don't know, man. I don't really feel like playing Apex M today. I look, my run's interesting. I got something cool going on here. In in your mind, put a little asterisk if we lose this idea and go, yeah, but I could have picked Apex M because that's what I'm gonna say if I lose this run. Yeah, there's a win here. You just click on Apex M. I don't feel like doing that today. I know. Oh, play more efficiently. Whatever. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think that Apex M is the free win either, since I only have one armor generator and no steel workers right now. I'm not. I'm not feeling it, Apex M. I'm sorry. Not that sorry, though. I'm not in the mood today, Hoss. Let's go. We're gonna go right. This deck benefits a lot from removals, although I do also want to look... Like going left is safer, because I can get two minus ones for Ritual. Ideally, we get Value Stone Holdover, but if that's not the case, then we can do two minus ones and start duplicating now. Yeah, I'll go left. You gotta go the safer idea here. Value Stone? Sick. No way that doesn't go on Ritual here. Now there's a holdover here. Remove consume, minus one goes... Minus one goes to Plank. Uh, definitely. I will plus ten of Plank as well. This is the all-in Plank game plan. Holdover. Alright, so holdover Ritual is good. Holdover Perils is better, I think, actually. It's easy to get baited in by holdover Ritual, but holdover Perils... And this run is really important because one of the best ideas for keeping Prince alive is going to be Void Binding. So we're going to do Hold Over Perils. That is my reasoning. Sticking to it. Uh, I do believe I will grab the Intrinsic for Perils, and I will also zero out Ritual of Battle. So I would not want to hold this over as well. We'll go and we'll pay one removal on Crane Steward, and we will put a plus 20 consume on two Torch. And that is fine. This run has made it to Ring 4 as a run of Hellhorned, and I have not seen an Imp. Except for Apex Imp, I guess, but does he really count? Maybe. Wrong, maybe. Go oh, Intrinsic Perils. Another winner here. There's another winning relic. A lot of our wins are going to come from relics, so I'm going to favor them a little bit in this run, I feel. I'm going to try to stockpile some money and look for them. Uh, another winner here is Light's Gift. 
There's just like, there's a lot of ideas that we can find here, but we have to find one of them. I'm not gonna take Spike's for it, even though I want the relic. Spike's for is scary. Prince is weak, and so making Prince's survivability more of a question mark is bad right now. Yeah, okay. So in the last run, in yesterday's run, if you haven't seen it, I had two holdover perils, and I was doing everything in my power to make sure that the perils were not wasting my energy. However, in this run today, I am just going to use the perils as a rage generation option. And that's it. Okay, blinking there is a little risky as well. Good say. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna use perils as a rage generator, and I'm not going to care about my energy because I don't have a I don't have a thing to play. I don't have uh, what was it? But this uh, putting it on the front doesn't actually do anything. I could stop the haste, but then I have to stop next haste as well. I could probably do that. I'm gonna stop the haste. Uh, yeah, I don't have. I don't have an X cost card that I'm trying to get a payout for. That's the that's the big difference in this one versus the last one. Gross. All right, Flink. Holy mission here! Kill the haste. Flink. 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 I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Okay. I'm I'm mad for myself. Like, why would I put myself in this position? But you know. Blink. I don't know why I would ever do such a thing to myself as to put faith in you. It's my own fault. That's all it is. It's my own fault. And the damage I take is my own. <sighs> that was 16. I think my best kill with Hornbreak is back here. There's the haste, very cool. Uh, 54, 54, 54. It's always gonna just be, it's gonna be the same. I'm taking 24. That's, that's the plank difference right there. Yeah, maybe there's like 25. Get a 100, take a 75, and never enough. What about our pain and anguish and move on with our day? It's fine, we have the health. I'm just not happy about it. You know, it's the risk that I took with the haste, but I, I looked ahead and it was a calculated risk, and everything went wrong there for that risk to pay against me. Everything that went wrong... Like, it, it looked about like that. I see putting my faith in Plink was a mistake today. I'm gonna let this boss just walk by so I don't have to deal with the curses that he's gonna generate if I let him go to Minfor, because he's definitely dead. Don't get me wrong. Just, you know, you can't, you can't dwell on it, Plink. At the end of the day, I got the health to lose. It's okay, Plink. I took 25. 24 of it was your fault. Hey, Inferno's a really good card here. Hey, you want, you want to see a winning click? That's a winning click. Trample Stone is okay. That's about as much as I'm willing to give it. It is fine. I have to wonder... I think with Inferno, you don't pick Trample Stone here. I know you're thinking it's crazy, right? But in the long term here, I have to assume that my damage output is going to become good enough. With Inferno, uh, especially so. I'm going to put a lot of stock in Inferno in this run. I think that this is just a worthless draw in a lot of cases. The only thing I need to think about now is surviving the Divinity. Mm, Fortify gets a uh, reserve effect. That's fine. You're basically adding Bone Dog to my deck and removing Fortify, which is an okay trade. Uh, we're going right. I need to path into some removals though, but it's really, it's tough. Go right here, right here, probably. Because I need to Hellvent the Rage. Need that, I Hellvent the Rage here. If there's a if there's a Value Stone here again, the run is much easier because I Value Stone Inferno and duplicate it twice. But that's a big if. Yeah, it's extreme stone. Uh, am I really gonna pay another 34 to make plink or another 15 pack shards to make plink here? I don't know. After the betrayal I have suffered today, I don't know. Let's duplicate the ritual for now. 
I'm gonna do my infusion here. I know I'm sitting on this infusion. I may as well do it. I'm not gonna skip out on it. I've been waiting to do it. I'm just gonna end up taking a lot of pack shards for not a lot of reward, it feels like. Don't be harvesters of death. Hey, this one isn't bad. I, I wanted to make a trade of Pyre Health for a Relic here, like I should have done in the last one. Although if I had done the trade, it would have gone a little bit against me, to be fair. Yeah, fuck you, Flink. I like... Uh, ugh, Flink. Don't forget to be mad at Flink today, I mean. It's a shame I have to use these as frontline, these morsels, because if I could feed these to my prince every turn, that would be cool. Like, if I could get them in front of Prince, but behind... Or in, if I could put Prince in front of Morsel Maker, but have him put those at the front, that'd be pretty cool. I hate you. I hate you, Plink. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. Too funny. I hate this card. It's actually, it's actually too funny, man. It won't, it won't work in my favor a single time. Hey, there we go. We got one more soul. I don't even need the more soul. I just wanted Plink to kill something for me today. I didn't even need it. I just wanted it to kill something. I wanted it to remind me that it could. Look at all these morsels. Look at all these morsels. These guys are all dead. I can just Inferno Plink forever here. Stop like that pretty well. Never forget that we are on what feels like a pretty losing path right now. Don't let it slip your mind that I think we're in a I think we're in a bad spot. I need to figure out how I'm keeping my units alive against the Divinity, particularly Prince. I'm hoping against hope for the game to show me Void Binding, but if it doesn't show me Void Binding, what am I doing? I'm probably dying, honestly. Look at that Morsel Maker tank, though. Look at him go. Come on, Void Binding, show up. Hey, there's Branding right. I think that... <laughs> I think that it's a real shame that I took Tempered Talisman, and now Branding Right is just an unpickable card because it kills Prince. I think that's a real shame, is what I feel. That seems like a darn shame, doesn't it? I could pick Gem Probe. It's like, it's good if I can play it. Right now I can't play it, but if I can play it, it's good. But I have so much expensive stuff. I don't know, I feel like I need to pick something to keep Prince alive, because right now we're pretty lost. The run is looking very done. And the game is not offering me a good pick. But Gem Trope, it just doesn't feel like it's the right take here. It's four energy, how do I ever play that? Because to play this I have to give up minus ones on things like Inferno, which actually matter a lot more. Yeah, I can't do it, I just can't pick it. The Divine Artifact? Ah. Sure. Rage 6. Why not? It's good. And then give him my relic or my item my card. Yeah. It's a tough position. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit a good relic here and then we're gonna win. Wow. These are horrible. Imsicle does nothing because my whole game plan is a full floor. Queen's Tail. I have no imps. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna hit a good relic here. Hey, Chain of Gems is actually good. That's a, that's a good, that's an acceptable hit. Make sure I play Prince first. But that's worth it. I'm gonna make Inferno cost one and then duplicate it most likely. Put another plus ten on a Plink. I believe in you, Plink. When no one else will, I believe, Plink. Inferno to one cost. 
Could double stack the Fortify. It becomes an okay source of armor at 10, and I can tend to just skip over playing it and do it. I'm gonna spend money on removal. I'm gonna put a plus 20 consume on a Plankus. And I'm gonna. I need to save a little more money than that, actually. I needed to not do the 120 removal. I needed to save enough money to go to the trinket shop here. That's a mistake. Hopefully it won't cost me too hard, but that is definitely a mistake. I thought I had one more ring to the trinket shop, but... What's done is done. Here we are now. Play your prince first, and let's have it. And then we go... Link here. Yep. I did it to myself by making a whole run around Flank, didn't I? 100%. It's my own fault. I, it's just my own fault. Don't, don't weep for me. I did this to myself. Oh, I need to not use my chain of gems up like that. I want that on the morsels. That's a habit I'm not going to want to get into. Wasting chain of gems. I almost just played Horn Break like it was Blink. Imagine if Horn Break was Blink. Oh god. That card would not feel good. Right, so on these on these fights I get to use Fortify as a self heal, and then later on I need to use it as an armor card. What are you doing? What are you doing? Playing. The enemy's right there. Like, it doesn't matter because these enemies are all gonna die anyway. Just what are you doing, Blink? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, Plinkus. Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Whatever. I've lost it. Oh, hey, this guy's actually got a bunch of to wipe from my boys. That's scary. Ah, good Inferno turn. Like, the enemies should not be a problem because I'm going down this Inferno game plan idea. I should be able to have the enemies die before uh, anything bad happens. I have to figure out how Prince doesn't die to sleep. I know you might be thinking I could play mid floor, but I definitely cannot play mid floor. I need the, need the, I need the extra turn. I'm pretty sure. Unless I draw Inferno turn one, maybe. Be hitting the boss really. Not that it matters that much. He's very dead. We're gonna win this fight. Now the run starts to get a little more challenging, though, for sure. We do get to go double draw, which is nice, since I took the perils holdover intrinsic idea. I mean, we get a Void Binding in the next ring, and then everything makes a lot more sense. I did it for you, Void Binding. I did it for you, Void Binding. Because really, that floor in Relentless is very bad. I don't think any of these cards make me feel any better. Umbrastone Reinforced Blazing Bolts. Not very good. I can draw, of course. I have a 255 gold. I have no more temples also, that's fine. I could always go left and look for... what? Yeah, there's nothing left for me. I'm just gonna go right and we're gonna first try hit... Fuck, I don't know, Rail Hammer? I don't even... Light's Gift, I guess, is the best hit. I don't even know what I want to find here. I'm gonna find something. Tell me something sick. Eh... Nine jacks is a maybe. Let me look at the board. I'm gonna go over on pack shards. I need to look at this. Hammer chest plates, I did say. That is pretty good. Helps my morsels live longer. Uh, Prismal Dust could be a winner. Okay, Prismal Dust, okay. That's a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a good one. Alright. I can't afford to reroll and buy anything, so I just have to save my money. If I had a, if I had 120 more gold, I could reroll that and maybe find the game winning trinket. You can just assume that that's the winning line if I lose this at this point. I feel. And I'm going to the duplicate over here. We're going to be over by five, which means that the boss does ten instead of nine, which matters. I will not be taking plus eight here unless I could. Probably get away with it. I put a lot of stock into these plinks, and they. I, this is the one fight where taking uh, Tempered Talisman is going to pay off for me. 
If I if I take a lot of damage because Plink betrays me, it is not going to be the backstab of the sentry because that would imply that I expect any more out of Plink than a total betrayal and backstabbing. You know who I don't expect to betray me? Inferno. Thank you, Inferno. Very cool. Not gonna play the consume Plink. I might need it. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not like this, brother. <laughs> what the hell? How could Plink do that? Alright, there you go. No more fear. Plink's on my side, trust. <laughs> I don't think Plink will betray me. Plink immediately betrays me. Within seconds, Plink betrays me. Oh my god, Plink betrayed me? I don't believe it. I'm gonna hope to draw Inferno for this first floor. I'm not gonna kill anything yet. I'm gonna hope to draw, oh, I'm gonna hope to draw Inferno for this floor, actually. I've changed my mind as to which floor needs to be Inferno. Alright, Plink. Okay, I held the consume plink. Okay. Pulling. Don't play me. I'm gonna be with a ton of armor. Now I draw Inferno here. Okay, it's good to have dreams though, isn't it? Again, like these enemies don't actually hit me. I have so much here. I have they have to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Wait. Oh, it duplicates the damage shield. Wow. That's even better than I thought it was. Okay, Plank. All right, Plank. All right, Plank. Plank, maybe forgive me. I might forget Plank's transgressions against the Empire. Yeah, wow. They really have a lot of they have a lot of frontline to go through, huh? Maybe this isn't that bad with the high roll on Chain of Gems plus the Morsel Master idea. We've been having some good fun here. We've been having some interesting ideas that don't look totally terrible. Oh, okay. But I have yo, I'm making good time on this run, dude. Look at this. It's, I got 30, 30 minutes still. Incredible. No matter what happens, I feel like this run's a bit of a bang. No matter how it goes. My rage scaling's a little slow, but, you know. The game mocks me with branding, right, and then shows me a winner in Tires and Climb. Void Binding! Okay, that was a really good set of cards. Wowie. Alright, let me go right. Here. Throw me Light's Gift now. Fossilized Fangs. I saw a Lightstone facing and I got excited for a second. Is there a holdover in here? There is. Huh. The path forward here is difficult to suss out. I am going to sit forward like this, and I am going to talk to you about each of the potential lines we can follow here. Lightstone casing makes this a very interesting proposition. Okay, let's talk about our options. There's three main ones that I'll be outlining here. You buy lightstone casing, put hold over on Inferno. You buy Lightstone Casing, you put Hold Over on Ritual. You don't buy Lightstone Casing, you put Hold Over on Void Binding. You don't buy Lightstone Casing, you put Hold Over on Tiresome Climb. I think that the Hold Over does not go on Tiresome Climb. I think it's an easy X. I also don't think it goes on Ritual Battle. I think if it goes on Ritual Battle, it goes on Void Binding. And so that leads us to Void Binding versus Inferno. I think it's better to go Void Binding, because I can do... Hold over, minus one, duplicate void binding. And this card is nuts. This card wins. This is two damage shield, rage six to prince every turn. That is everything he needs. He will be absolutely chilling. And then every other card in this deck acts as a bit of a support line for that. That feels like the obvious answer. And then every, all the other stuff like Tiresome Climb act as deterrence to delay the boss before I get to that point. Okay. So I'm gonna buy lightstone casing. I'm also gonna reroll right now. Nothing exciting. I'm going to buy minus one holdover void binding. 
And before I duplicate, I want to check for a double stack. Also put a plus 20 consume on Plink. Permafrost, that is fine. No problem. I actually like that a little bit on the Inferno, so I can save it for a specific turn. Can use this to disarm a Spikes Wave now. Yeah, that's kind of cute. Okay, and then I will buy a minus one, and that goes on Tiresome Climb. And I will purge a Torch. What an incredible swing that our run made in the last little area here, huh? We made a real, like a, I went from uncertain to winning in one ring. Let's do it. I could have taken that money and bought something, but there wasn't really anything to buy for 100 gold. So. Ooh. I do... I, I... Yeah, we're good, right? I think we're just good. Light Prince first. The boss is going to cut me down by half every turn, but I'm going to be putting up so much that it doesn't matter. And we have plenty of cards to support it. Shoot. I think we're winning. Oh yeah, Morsel Master. What an interesting run. Kind of a kind of a fun one. I'm I'm glad I went this way. The Apex Incline, I'm sure it exists, but I think it would have been pretty confusing, and I didn't really feel like playing Apex in today. Oh, I took Ember Dream. Oh, wait, I took Ow, oh, I took Ember Dream. Hmm. Oh yeah, darn. Took Ember Drain, eh? Yeah, Ember Drain stacking Prince seems really good. I, you know, if you're one of the long-term uh, big fans of, what is it, Perils of Production? Sorry, I forgot the name there for a second. If you're a long-term Perils believer, I, 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 I get it now, I guess is what I want to say to you. I respect it. I don't like it, but I get it. I think someone explained it to me. The, the Someone actually left a comment that made me go, oh, okay, I get it now for real. And that was that they looked at taking the perils, like picking offering token before you have an anything line in Stygian, right? Picking perils lets me open myself up to this void binding game plan. And the ability to have that as an out is worth the one card in my deck, right? Because sometimes it's just a dead card. Sometimes it is just worthless, but more often than not, it does pan out in my favor. There's a 290 here. I'm gonna go ahead and Inferno. I'm gonna Inferno this way. I thought about doing a Tiresome Climb or something to, like, Tiresome Climb one of these guys up, but I think it's... I, I guess I should have Tiresome Climb the 15-3, actually. How do you mention it? That would have been right. Like, there's no reason this unit has to be alive here. It should be dead. I'm trying to just get enough rage to stay ahead of, uh, Seraph's chase thing here. And it looks like I actually have enough, which is good. This wave's a little scary, it's a lot of damage. Or a lot of health, I should say. But we have more souls to bait Seraph away, hopefully. Nice, so let's me get an extra round off. Good. And now now we just get raw rage value. And even though I have three holdovers, I draw seven cards per turn thanks to the perils gameplay. Pretty good. Gotta say. Just move that guy out of the way. His existence is meaningless. And I think that there's no way I can lose this from this position because I, I have enough answers in the deck that I have to pull one before the Divinity kills Prince. And my Prince is 170 times 5 in a fight against Chase Seraph. So I imagine that in a fight against a true hero, we're going to be even better off. So, and our frontlining seems like it should be good enough. Especially with a little help from our friends here in Inferno. Uh, main thing I'll want to keep in mind is no chain of gems wastes, but looking, looking all right here. Unless this is enough. It is enough. It is... Oh yeah, because don't forget he has 20 damage shield. Don't forget our Relentless is much better. My boy has 24 damage shield back there. Easy to forget that I'm also getting damage shield. hundred percent I'm gonna title this episode I relied on Plink or something like that. And if I were I've been in the Darkest Dungeon videos, I've been taking screenshots from the game for the thumbnail. If I were to take a screenshot from this game, it would have been that Plink after right after I said I'm relying on Plink here, just instantly missing both enemies and leaving me for dead. 
That is prime blink right there. Absolute prime blinkage. Good job, Blink. Didn't hit the divinity a single time there. Really good. Gotta respect the hustle. Now, right after I said I don't think there's any way that I lose this game, appears to be putting that theory to the test. It's worth a shot, Blink. You tried. You gave it a good effort, Blink, and I can respect that. Okay, never mind. I got it. Void Binding is here in time. Pull the Inferno to wait, deal with the Scary Wave right there. Scary Wave no longer scary. You're all dead. You're scary, Mr. Shade Wing. Hey, okay, I'll never kill him. I'm sorry. I should play the armor. I'm cool. There's no reason not to play the armor there. I think we're scaling fast enough, though. Yeah. And we can also just tire some time that guy away. Can I not kill you? Is there a way? Eh, you know what? There, there might be a way in here somewhere. I don't really care. I'm gonna kill the protector down here instead. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm gonna take like 10. It's fine. I think they do 10. It's fine. It is fine. I always say it's 10 and it's never 10. Every single time I say I'm gonna take 10, it's never 10. It never has been 10. It never will be 10. Oh yeah, wow. So, with hammered chest plates and and scorched steel, these magma morsels actually live the divinity sweep. Isn't that something? Four damage shield. Keep you going. My mor my morsel tanking plan actually worked. I can't believe it. My game plan of hit good relics wins. I love it, man. I'm I'm over the moon about it. How how exciting. I got a scary wave down here of spikes. I'm trying to minimize spikes coming at me, but there's not much I can do about it. Truly. I can play void binding about it, I guess. Yeah, that's about it. I actually think that if I play Forever Consumed, I save 25 here. Yeah, puts him right under the 198. So I take one to save 25. And now, sadly, the Spikes Wave does get through, but I do have 11 damage shield on Prince. I feel like at this point, even if everything goes against me and I don't pull the answer here, which I did in Form Break, I still feel like I would be okay. I can I can gut the wave that's gonna walk up into Relentless, or I can kill the Wilt Wings. Which is it? I think it's gut the Relentless wave. If that makes sense. I'm I'm very excited that this run won, though. I gotta tell you, I I've been having I've been having a good time just thinking of dumb ideas and then seeing if they work. Like, this is a dumb idea. My my plan of what if I take Hornbreaker Prince and put Morsel Maker in front of him. This plan shouldn't win. This is bad. Like, this is not a good play. But uh, I prioritized hitting Relics, and we hit some, pri some good ones. I could have been a little bit better about hitting my Relics, but... You don't have to tell anyone. I missed, I missed looking at, like, three Relics on this round. But we hit the important ones. Hammered chest plates actually really clutch there. Yeah. I, I don't I would not have played this line if I didn't start Scorch Steel though. I gotta tell you that. That's a very important thing to say. I would never have tried this without Scorch Steel. With Scorch Steel, uh the early game is super strong with this Morsel Maker tank though. Like really, really strong. And then it buys us time to look for the answers to Chase Seraph and the Divinity, which we found right at the end. But we found it. And uh, that was really, that was great. I like that run a lot. Play it yourself, maybe, if you enjoyed it. I think this one's worth playing. And I thank, thank, I, I thank, well, I do thank. I thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.